Hi, this is Dr. Emily Scherning with AR. I'd like to say hello to all of our friends in Wyoming. Folks, I struggled with this forecast. I've found a lot of unexpected hope so far in the 50 States Project. There are many more places in our country with decent climate outlooks than I expected. A lot of places where people are going to be able to dig in, build resilience in their communities, and make a good future. But Wyoming, you've been dealt a bad hand. I'm going to give you the clearest information I can so you can decide how to best get ready. In the federal report, you're placed in the Northern Great Plains region, which overall has a strong outlook. I have already looked at the data for Nebraska, South Dakota, and North Dakota. Those three states do have the potential for increased agricultural output. There are a lot of opportunities there. But Wyoming, you're going to be experiencing more severe and dramatic changes than your neighboring states. You've already seen how bad the spring floods are likely to get. Starting this year, when we saw those torrential rivers rip through the Yellowstone area, those changes in hydrology are very serious and they're projected to get worse. I'm gonna show you something here in the National Climate Assessment. This figure is looking at uh, changes in average stream flow in the mid 21st century. Admittedly, this is modeling for the higher scenario, RCP 4.5, where I use RCP uh, 4.5 rather than 8.5 here as my standard modeling scenario. You can see here, without looking at anything else, that we've got the bottom end of the scale and the top end of the scale right next to each other. Folks, Whenever you see that, I got to speak plainly, that's a sure sign that something is all messed up. You got two big challenges coming to a head in Wyoming. One of them is that your water system is just going nuts. The other is that you're going to be dealing with temperature changes that are outside of our records or memory for this region. And those two things are going to influence each other. So we got to deal with them together. To figure this out, I think the best way to present it is to start with the winter and work forward through the projected year. Let's get ready. We're gonna start with the plant hardiness zone map from the USDA. So this is looking at Wyoming based on historical data from 1980 to 2009. Cold winters in Wyoming. You've got zone five at the lower elevations, four, three, and then the rare one, two spots, your highest mounds, your coldest winters. Let's look at RCP 4.5, our most likely future uh, on our current technological pathway, lowered emissions future. You can look at mid-century here and we see some changes. We keep those peaks, but we notice tremendous retreat of like the zone four and substantial zone three retreat as well. So there are going to be areas that will still hold snowpack, but they are smaller. And let's look at that transition again. So the contemporary data, we can see that we had zone four extending over into South Dakota. The retreat is substantial and we notice proportionally, perhaps the largest retreat is in the foothills of the bighorns here. So that's a big change. There is still going to be decent freeze throughout the winter, which is useful. That improves the survival chances for your current mature plants, particularly if you're in an area that's staying in zone. Overall, this level of cold will reduce the amount of pests that come into the area. So there is some relative good news here, this relative winter cool conservation. It's good news in some ways, and you'd think it would be good news for the snowpack, but I gotta show you how much earlier the spring is coming before we take that in. So here we are, we're looking in the federal report at the change in the number of days below 28. So your cold days, we're gonna be able to actually hold a freeze. You can see that even in your lower emission scenario, a good scenario for much of the country, we see a lot of red here in Wyoming in uh, the sort of the Tetons area particularly, indicating a loss of 40 to 45 days of freezing temperatures, a dramatically earlier spring. So that's pretty significant there. We gotta pair it though with the precipitation trends as we start to envision what's gonna happen to the snowpack. We know there's a smaller area that's gonna get a really thick, cold snowpack that we are gonna have a shorter time to work with it. And we got to think about what's going to happen with the increased winter and spring precipitation trends by mid-century. We can look here at projected changes for winter precipitation. The cross-hatched areas are where it's statistically significant. 
For Wyoming, we're looking at substantially more winter precipitation, including in your mountainous areas, 10 to 15%. In this agricultural area, and maybe this will be good for you guys, we've got a 15 plus percent increase in winter precipitation. I wanna point out this is mid 21st century, but it is under the higher emissions model, 4.5. I'm continuing to show this for our forecast where I try to focus on RCP 4.5 modeling because of recent research suggesting that temperate areas will see more dramatic changes in precipitation than previously thought. So winter precipitation, we're looking at 10 to 15%. Let's take a second and look over at spring precipitation. And there in the spring, we see cross hatching right over the mountains. So in a typical year, you're going to see uh, 10 to 15% increase also in your spring precipitation. And we can see here that where we had a lot more winter precipitation in the Southeast, you're gonna get more spring precipitation in the Northeast. A lot more rain falling over Wyoming under all of these models in the winter and spring. You're gonna get a lot more precipitation and there's gonna be more of it falling as rain than snow by a lot. The snowpack is going to decline. The best case scenario that I've seen in an RCP 4.5 scenario where we do bring emissions down is showing a 25 to 40% drop in snowpack by the end of the century. So you're looking at maybe a 10 to 15% drop by mid-century. But you're not just looking at the declining snowpack in isolation. Those spring rains will melt the winter snowpack much faster than it used to melt. You know how it goes. The rain, it melts the snowpack. You got flash flood fast melting. There will be years where you get a great snowpack, but most of those years, it's not going to be like how a good snowpack year used to be, where you'd have good stream flow going well into the fall. In the future, a good snowpack is going to mean a really bad spring flood season. Idaho is looking at peak stream flows shifting from July to March, and they don't have as big an increase in spring precipitation as you do in Wyoming. So this is bad. But in Wyoming, you're also looking at significantly decreased summer precipitation uh, in concert with more frequent and severe droughts from the summer going into the fall. Let's check out just for a little second the degree of summer precipitation decrease. You can see here that Wyoming, it's a 10 to 15 percent drop. It's not cross-hatched, so we expect higher levels of variability. But a 5 to 10% drop, that's a meaningful when those summer rains were already like a rare and precious thing, right? And this decrease in the summer precipitation is coming in the context of a very serious summer heat up. Let's check that out. We're going to go to the USDA heat zone map. This one, the colors on the map, again, relate to historical data from the 80s to 2009. The colors are how many days you see over 86. Wyoming traditionally has had a pretty cool summer. Most of the state sees less than a month over 86. Let's look at mid-century under the 4.5 scenario. The change is enormous. The change is the most substantial around our fairly isolated uh, Bighorns mountain range. We're going to look at it one more time. You can see that in the areas that are lower elevation, that were already warmer, that peach color bordering the mint, the peach color is at 90 days, up to 90 days over 86. We can see that they're seeing less substantial change, more like a additional month of heat up. But as we go back to the mid-century projections, the mid elevation areas are seeing the most substantial change. They're going from blue, from 15 to 30 days over 86 to 45 to 90 days over 86. It is a uh, very serious, this is going to impact some forested areas. It is hard to see how a forested area that's going to be experiencing drought and this sort of unprecedented temperature is going to be able to survive. The good news that we see on this map is that Yellowstone and the Tetons and the high elevation bighorns as well as uh, these mountains coming up, uh, bordering the edge of Cheyenne, we have relatively good summer cool conservation, indicating the hope of preservation of some of those high elevation forests. You know, a lot of Wyoming is arid. I'm gonna look at the map, uh, just a Google map of terrain right now. 
Many of those areas where we see the summer conservation, such as uh, down here in Medicine Bow Root, sorry, I forgot the name a minute ago. There's hope for those forests, right? There's hope for the high elevation here. There's hope for Yellowstone, for Tetons. When we look at what is green now, that's going to get really hot. All of these areas that are sort of lining rivers are gonna be in trouble. That's where we're gonna have a real increase of a wildfire danger and on um, the lower elevation slopes of these mountains, like this area, potential for wildfire. I'm really sad to say that the most extreme change of an area that's already not too arid, an area that already has some green, some water around it, is right here in the Wind River Reservation. And we're gonna look at another figure that really highlights that because uh, looking at just an increase in days over 86, that's, you know, it's meaningful, but it doesn't let us know how many of them are gonna be really hot. We're able in this uh, figure from the NCA to look at the really hot days. And we can see that in Wyoming, again, a big bordering of contrasts. We're right up to the high elevation areas in the Bighorns, for example. You're going to be seeing about uh, 30, 35 more days over 90 degrees. And those are in areas that were historically cool, that historically didn't hit over 86 even. It's a real tongue of heat. And right there is um, the biggest heat island of all, 40, 45 days over 90 degrees. It's going smack at Wind River. It's really sad news. <sighs> Wyoming, this is a very serious heat up. These two to three month heat ups, they're not that common as I've looked across the nation. Wyoming is the 45th state I've looked at out of 50. So I've seen a fair amount of what's out there. This big summer heat up coming in the context of a summer drought, coming in the context of totally changed hydrology where you're not gonna get normal stream flow in the summer. Those stream flows, they're gonna be really reduced by summer because the snowpack is gonna be gone early due to those prolonged extreme spring rains. There's no way around it. It's, it's looking challenging. We gotta have hope though. We saw that many of the great forests in your state are in zones of relative summer and winter conservation. We gotta have hope there's potential for much of the national forest to be saved in Wyoming. Probably looking better for Yellowstone than the Tetons probably gonna see some more tree line retreat occurring in the big horns, only the high elevation will, will be okay. Medicine wheel in the big horns, it's very hard for me to predict if it's gonna make it in or outside of the safety zone. It's right in the balance. So we, we have to hope for a medicine wheel. There's one more concern I wanna make sure that we address. On top of all of the heat and water stuff, you know, Wyoming already has about the most extreme weather in America. Y'all are near the top of the charts for hail. That's likely to get even more extreme as we move through the century. The weather in Wyoming is likely to become quite life-threatening. And I say this as someone who spends a fair amount of time under hurricane watch each year, we get some ice storms. I'm not saying life-threatening weather in the context of someone from a pleasant climate who's afraid of thunder. The Wyoming weather trends are very severe. You have two big systems building in this nation. There's the big drought zone, that's forming up over the Southwest. And there's this big wet heat up coming out of the Gulf. It's crashing through the heartland. Wyoming is where they're gonna hit. The storms are gonna be unprecedented and frequent. Let's take a minute. What's the good news here? There is some good news. There are some opportunities. You're over an aquifer that has a decent recharge rate. So the more of the spring precipitation you can get into the aquifer, the better situation you're in for irrigation. Sustainable irrigation from groundwater is gonna be a big part of uh, Wyoming's future and the future of the Northern Great Plains in general. It's clear even from cruising around on Google Maps that irrigation aquifer is a booming business in Wyoming today. There's also some good news for heritage, tourism and recreation and that Yellowstone National Park is in one of the more temperature conserved areas of the state. In other mountain areas under a reduced emissions scenario, that RCP 4.5 scenario, you could be looking at only small declines in the cross country ski season at mid-century. Could be less than a 20% decline in the length of the season. If you can keep four fifths of the ski season, that's enough to keep those recreation and tourism industries afloat. And it's not as good as up by Yellowstone, but the conservation isn't terrible in the Tetons. There are high elevation parts of the Bighorns 
where you'll also probably have decent forest conservation. Those are all important areas for culture, tourism, and recreation. There's some realistic hope for all of them. Here's the big picture. In Wyoming, you're looking at a yearly pattern that is very different with milder, wetter winters, earlier, wetter springs, and big floods. Longer, hotter summers with droughts going into the fall. And your stream flows will be very different, probably peaking around March like we saw in Idaho instead of in the summer. But the flooding here in Wyoming looks to be worse than anywhere, worse than Idaho, worse than say Utah, in part because of those big increases in spring rain in the much earlier spring thaw. Remember, could be 45 days under the best case scenario, additional days above freezing in the mountains. On top of that, we gotta throw in some seriously terrifying storms and a major lack of federal data and federal resources. There are big holes in the data for Wyoming, very striking holes in both the historical and the contemporary data. If you wanna dig in here, you're gonna to have to be incredibly tough. I know plenty of you in Wyoming already are, but I have to tell you straight, this is a forecast where for many parts of the state, I would probably try to get my family out. If you wanna live in a mountain environment that's gonna stay more like Wyoming is today, get west into Idaho. Your nearby ranges in Idaho and in Utah, they're looking at much less extreme changes in hydrology. They're still changing, but it's not gonna be as wild as what you'll see in Wyoming. If you're open to relocating within the region and you're not as much like a heart in the mountains type person, head east and north. The changes will all be much more moderate towards the eastern edge of Wyoming. They keep improving as you get into the Dakotas. The Dakotas have a very good outlook. Eastern Montana has a lot of potential too. Myself, I'd go with North Dakota. Cool summers, well-monitored aquifers. You can still get some good land values there too, that's for sure. I wanna say again, I'm sorry I can't offer more hope here. All I can do is give you a reasonable and honest assessment of the data, which suggests many parts of Wyoming are gonna hit transformational life-threatening tipping points. I don't say that a lot. I mean, check out the Florida video. It's, it's not as bad as people wanna say, and we see nightmare scenarios of Florida all the time in the news. But who talks about Wyoming? I, I did not realize the degree to which Wyoming is like the nexus of the climate disaster in the US. It's very serious. All of the neighboring states have better outlooks than Wyoming. A uh, bunch of cards are falling just wrong here, stacking up, influencing each other. Those spring floods are going to be apocalyptic. You will not want to be by the new canyons that are gonna be carved out here at the heart of our country. Do your research. There's still time to get ready. Everything's gonna accelerate over the next 10 years. The changes will keep getting more noticeable. No matter what we do, even if we magically could get emissions down to zero tomorrow, the changes are gonna get worse for a while. It's like steering a really big boat. It takes time to turn it, right? Get the jump on the changes for your family now where there's still time and really a fair amount of good opportunities available, both in your larger region and in the greater US. You can make a plan. This is Dr. Shirting with AR signing out. Please like and subscribe. Help get the message out there. There is hope. We can prepare for what's coming. Let's get ready.